close your eyes and picture Legolas. Not Orlando Bloom, Legolas. Now, without overthinking your choice, answer this question. What colour is Legolas's hair? A la Tulia Meldonia, a hara maria say. My name is Rainbow Dave and welcome to another Tolkien lore video. Now, the good news is that whatever answer your mind's eye conjured about Legolas's hair colour, you're right. There are no wrong answers here. Well, except maybe pink. You see, despite the fact that Legolas is far from an insignificant character, Tolkien kept almost everything about him a mystery. We don't know how old he is, or who his mother was, or even what colour his hair is. And so, all we can do is speculate and draw our own conclusions. However, this seemingly trivial question about a supporting character's hair colour in fact opens up a much wider question about the nature of the Woodland Elves, their mysterious history in Middle-earth, and even the characteristics of their political and cultural identities. Well, at least to an extent. So, I feel that most people, when imagining Legolas's hair colour, will fall into one of two camps. Gold and dark. Now, if you imagine something else, like silver or brown, that's all good too. Like I said, there are no wrong answers. But when it comes to what Tolkien actually wrote, there really are only two points of reference. One for dark, and one for gold. So, when Legolas is first introduced in the Fellowship of the Ring, we are told nothing more than that he was a strange elf clad in green and brown. However, a few chapters later, Tolkien does tell us his head was dark. Now, on the one hand, this may seem fairly cut and dry. Legolas' hair is dark, what more is there to say? But it should be noted that within the context of this scene, Legolas is being described at night, and so the jury's still kind of out on whether the darkness refers to, like, the pigment of his hair, or simply the nighttime shadows. Now, the only other reference that the professor gives us on this topic can be found in The Hobbit, where the elven king of Mirkwood is described as wearing a crown of leaves upon his golden hair. Now, 18 years later, this elven king was of course revealed to be Thranduil, the father of Legolas. So, it stands to reason that Legolas may have inherited his father's hair colour, and thus, Legolas's hair would be golden. But again, this should be taken with a pinch of salt, because, despite what the movies tell us, Legolas does not appear in The Hobbit, and when Tolkien wrote it way back in the 1930s, neither Legolas nor the Fellowship even existed in his mind. So like I said, there are no wrong answers. And at the end of the day, this debate really isn't a big deal either way. And I guess we are all free to imagine Legolas's hair in whatever way we choose. But I do think there's more to this question than simple aesthetics. Because ultimately, what we're debating here isn't what a supporting character looks like, but the nature of the Wood Elves themselves. So. When we talk about Wood Elves in Middle-earth, we're not really talking about one independent clan of elves. Instead, we're talking about two. You see, the woodland realm of Mirkwood, formerly known as the Greenwood, is populated entirely by Dark Elves. But not all Dark Elves are the same. On the one hand, there are the Sylvan Elves, who are reclusive, forest-dwelling folk that pretty neatly fit into our preconceived ideas of what a wood elf might look like. But, on the other hand, there are the Sindar Elves, and they're a bit different. By the way, unlike in a lot of other fantasy worlds, the term Dark Elf has nothing to do with, like, evil elves. It simply refers to those elves who have not been ennobled by the light of the West. So, way back in the First Age, the only elves in the woodland realm were the native Sylvan. And these guys lived simple and scattered lives amongst the trees. 
Now, I actually only learned this quite recently, but the word Sylvan is not an elven word. It was not invented by Tolkien. Instead, Sylvan first entered our language through the Roman god Sylvanus, who happened to be the god of woodland, forests, and uncultivated wilderness. So, although Sylvan is the word that Tolkien most commonly used to describe these woodland elves, their actual name in the elvish language is Tawawaith, which means wood people. And the Sylvan were given this name by their cultural cousins, the Sindar. Now, the Sindar were not originally inhabitants of the Greenwood. Back in the First Age, they were known as the Grey Elves of Beleriand, and they fought alongside the Noldor from the west in the wars against Morgoth. But, to be honest, the Sindar and the Noldor have ugh, a rather rocky relationship. And once Morgoth was defeated and the Second Age began, their common enemy was no more. However, unfortunately for the surviving Sindar, both their kingdom and their king were also gone. And now they mostly lived as refugees in the new kingdom of the Noldor. And so, understandably, they were somewhat reluctant to recognize the Noldor's king as their new monarch. So, a pair of Sindar princes called Amadir and Orifa decided to journey east and to build two new Sindar kingdoms of their own. So, after crossing the Misty Mountains, Amdir journeyed south, and he came to the lands of Lothlorien. There he established a new kingdom, and he became the Sindar king of a predominantly Sylvan population. Orifa, on the other hand, he went north, and there he founded his own kingdom, in the Greenwood. And just like with Amadir in Lothlorien, Orifa became the new king of the princeless Sylvan. Now, this means that in both of the Woodland Realms, we have a large population of less wise but more dangerous Sylvan Elves being governed by a smaller but much more elite ruling class of Sindar Elves. And this Sindar-Sylvan distinction brings us all the way back to our original question. What colour is Legolas's hair? You see, Orifa's great claim to fame, apart from being the fool who got two-thirds of his army killed in the War of the Last Alliance, is that Orifa is the grandfather of Legolas. Which means that despite Legolas's appearance being very much in keeping with that of a wood elf, you know, a strange elf clad in green and brown, we know that Legolas has at least some Sindar heritage. What we don't know is how much. And this is because Tolkien tells us absolutely nothing about the women in Legolas's family. We know that his grandfather was a prince of the Sindar, but who was his grandmother? Who was his mother? To answer these questions, there's nowhere to go but deep down the rabbit hole of educated speculation. So, the identity of Orifa's wife is completely unknown to us, and the identity of Thranduil's wife is completely unknown to us, and the identity of Amdir's wife is completely unknown to us, but what we do know is that Amdir's son Amroth fell in love with an elf maiden called Nimrodel. And unlike Orifa and Amdir and Amroth, Nimrodel was not one of the Sindar elites. Instead, she was a native Sylvan. Now, it's a little bit of a stretch to presume that Sindar princes intermarrying with Sylvan women was the norm, just because there's one example of it. But to be fair, it is the only example that we have. And furthermore, in the Unfinished Tales, Tolkien tells us Orifa had come to the Greenwood with only a handful of Sindar, and they were soon merged with the Sylvan elves adopting their language and taking names of Sylvan form and style. 
They wished indeed to become Sylvan folk, and to return, as they said, to the simple life. So this passage pretty much states that the Sindar under King Orifer went native, and before long they assimilated themselves into the pre-existing Sylvan society of the Woodland Realm. In fact, Tolkien tells us they did this deliberately. So, in my mind, this seems like fairly solid evidence to suggest that Orifer may have taken a Sylvan bride, and the two clans may have merged quite literally. And this is further supported by Tolkien's description of Thranduil's hair. Okay, so before I go too deep into this whole hair colour issue, I should point out that this is not an exact science. Both the Sindar and the Sylvan were originally descended from the clan known as the Teleri, so it's not impossible that a Sindar and a Sylvan could both share the same hair colour. However, throughout the Legendarium, we are introduced to loads of Sindar elves, and almost all the ones who get a description have either dark or silver hair. Not one of them, with the possible exception of Thranduil, is ever described as blonde. Now, on the other hand, there is only one Sylvan character in the entire Legendarium whose hair colour is explicitly given, and he is an unnamed friend of Haldir's who we meet in Lothlorien. And Tolkien tells us this guy's hair glinted like gold in the sun. Furthermore, there is an implication that Amroth's lover Nimrodel also had golden hair as it's compared to sunlight upon the golden boughs. But this is admittedly a little more open to interpretation, so I guess we can put her in the maybe pile. Anyway, from our admittedly limited samples, we may presume that black or grey or silver are the colours of Sindar hair, and some type of golden, whether that be blonde or ginger, I'll let you decide, is the colour of Sylvan hair. And if this is the case, then I'd speculate that Thranduil's golden hair suggests he may be the product of interbreeding between a Sindar father and a Sylvan mother. So, if we accept that Legolas's grandmother was indeed some sort of wood elf, then this would make Legolas at least 25% Sylvan, and at most 75% Sylvan. Now, we would be able to narrow this down a little bit more if we knew anything about his mother, but alas, we do not. And this is why the question of Legolas's hair colour is so interesting. Close your eyes and picture him again. If you're imagining a character with dark or silvery grey hair, then the implication is that Thranduil took a wife with at least some significant degree of Sindar heritage, and this would suggest that even two generations after Orifer, there is still some sort of divide between the elite Sindar rulers and their majority Sylvan populace. However, if you're imagining Legolas with golden or blonde or ginger hair, then this implies that the Sindar truly did go native and the woodland rulers are now indistinguishable from the people they rule. Perhaps, just as Orifer intended, the Sindar and the Sylvan merged into something new. Perhaps the Sindar made the Sylvan a bit more wise, and the Sylvan made the Sindar a bit more dangerous. Whenever we talk about elves in Middle-earth, the conversation tends to revolve around the elves of the West and their descendants. And that's probably fair enough, you know, the Noldor are truly fascinating characters and they seem to love creating drama. But whilst discussing the big name characters like Galadriel and Elrond and Glorfindel, we mustn't forget the Elves of the East, the woodland folk who Tolkien told us so little about. They did not build great cities, nor were they masters of lore, but they do demonstrate the virtues of a simpler life in tune with nature. They are mysterious and secretive, but also ancient and fair. 
And because Tolkien's Legendarium is somehow both amazingly detailed in its scope, but also strangely reticent in regards to character descriptions, we're able to use our mind's eye to create our own conclusions about the simpler, humbler, and more dangerous variety of woodland elves. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did there are plenty more like it on the channel so check them out, but as always until next time my dear friends, much love, stay groovy, and Navaya Melanine.